Hello. In a recent video, I talked about how you should not use the per use MFA portal to enable MFA. So instead, we should use the Entra conditional access or security defaults feature within Entra ID. I want to share with you five tips for making sure you've got conditional access up and running properly. I'm not going to go through the entire process of setting up conditional access. That's an entirely different video. This one is just talking about the five things that you definitely should do or not do when you're using conditional access. Let's jump in and take a look. So from the Entra Admin Center, we get to conditional access from protection down to conditional access. And here you can see we have an overview portal. I'm going to minimize this menu for you so we can see it a bit better. I've zoomed right in because I hate small screens. So here we can see that we have an overview section, policies, insight reporting, diagnose and solve problems. But what I want to talk to you first about is not being too specific. So if we choose policies and create a new policy, you can see that if I give it a name such as require MFA, and then I can choose some users, for example. So I could say all users, right? That's not specific at all. That's everyone. That's a very good idea. Make sure you include everyone you can in these policies. You could exclude some users, but we'll talk about that in a bit. Moving on to target resources. This used to be called cloud apps and, and actions, but it's now called target resources. And we have the options to choose cloud apps, user actions, authentication, context, or global secure access, which is in preview and I'm not configured. So here we can set which cloud apps will be affected by this particular conditional access policy. So if your goal or if your users are currently using Exchange Online, maybe SharePoint and OneDrive, but not any of the other cloud apps, it might be tempting to choose select apps and then choose in select. You might want to choose Exchange Online, maybe Office 365 as well. You also want to protect SharePoint. So go ahead and type SharePoint. There we go. Maybe OneDrive is separate these days. No, it's not. So now we've protected the core applications that we have not selected any. That's not good. Let's do that again. I'm going to go ahead and choose Exchange Online and select those and then jump back to there and type SharePoint. You can see I don't do this very often. Okay, so now we have the three core apps two core apps that we want to protect. So let's say we now move down into conditions and we say that in the event that the user is using their Windows device, we can select a device platform and say Windows, choose done. And in that case, we want them to be affected by MFA and they need we need to secure them in that particular scenario. So we choose grant and then we grant and require MFA. Select that and create it. Okay, we've created a report only policy for requiring MFA. There it is right there. Now, theoretically, that is exactly what we want to do. In practice, that is definitely not what we want to do. So we have some holes in this particular policy. Let me show you what I mean. If I go over to what if and have a look at this tool we can use to check how policies are applying, we choose user and I'll go for a user. I'll just go for Alex Wilbur. And let's say they are accessing Exchange Online, like we talked about. So if you find Exchange Online, there it is. So when Alex accesses Exchange Online from his Windows device, we'll choose what if, and we should see that in this section called policies that will apply, we should see our require MFA policy that I just configured there. Don't worry about the rest of the policies in this list. That's other testing I've been doing and other things that I want to show you. But this one here is the one we've just configured called require MFA. And the grant control is require multi-factor authentication. It's in report only right now just for this demonstration, but this will apply. Great, we're protected. In that case, he needs to satisfy the MFA prompt. But what about if we take a look at a different cloud app? So for example, what if he tries to access the Microsoft admin portal and remove Exchange Online. So he tries to access the Microsoft admin portal, so admin.microsoft.com. Let's choose what if. Ah, require MFA is no longer in this policies that will apply list. It's in the policies that will not apply list because if you look at the reasons that why this policy will not apply, it says it's not a targeted cloud app. 
So what have we done then? Well, in this case, we've created a policy that specifically protects the workloads that we want to protect, but ignores the workloads that we aren't considering. So for example, any other workload that a user can log into, any other cloud app that a user can, lo can log into, doesn't require MFA right now because the policy doesn't target it. And that's, you know, not such a big deal until you consider that that's how the attacker would get in. That's what attackers do. They try to find ways that aren't protected in order to get into the environment. So they would use things like the graph API, or they would use things like the admin portal and try to break through the defenses that way. And so if we are specific about the cloud apps that we protect, then we aren't protecting all cloud apps. So for example, if we choose the three apps that we want to protect just here and go into this target resources section, the suggestion is that you should use all cloud apps in order to protect all cloud apps. And now when we go back to the what if tool and take a look at what happens when he tries to access the Microsoft admin portal, which is what if, we'll scroll down and you can see that the policy policies that will not apply section does not contain require MFA. And if we go down in the policies that will apply section, we see we have require MFA. So now, regardless of the application that he uses, he will be protected by MFA. Perfect. That means that we have some control of whether people can access these applications aside from just the password. But there was one other thing that we did. We specified that he must be using a Windows device in order to use these applications, right? Well, not quite. We specified that MFA is only required when you're using a Windows device. So for example, using the what if tool once more, if I choose device platform and choose Mac OS, for example, go back to what if, you can see that no longer do we have require MFA in this list. It's in policies that will not apply because it's not targeted by the device platform that we've set. So if an attacker wanted to attack this environment and they tried to access it using the Windows device and it didn't work, they would try Linux. They would try Mac OS. They would try something that isn't covered by your policy. So even if you don't want users to use these platforms, you should still protect them or block them. If you don't want them to use macOS, then you should create a block rule which targets macOS so that when they do try and use macOS, it's blocked. And when the attacker tries to use macOS, it's blocked. Finally, one tiny thing I want to specify on this uh, device platform concept. If you are wanting to protect all device platforms, let's go back into conditions and choose device platforms it is not correct to specify all device platforms by ticking all of these boxes. While that technically does cover Android, iOS, Windows Phone, Windows, Mac OS, and Linux, it doesn't cover all device platforms because there are device platforms that aren't in this list. There are device platforms that are not specified, for example. So if I were an attacker and this was a policy that was set, I would simply remove the user agent string and the device agent string from the attempted login and it wouldn't match one of these platforms and therefore it wouldn't wouldn't require me to do MFA. So if you want to cover all device platforms, choose all, any device. Okay, now that we have this all configured, that was tip number one. Don't be too specific when you configure conditional access policies. Next, let's just accept that change happens. Microsoft are constantly changing how conditional access works, how Entra works, what Entra is called. Change happens. And so keep up to date with the changes. For example, there was a policy called uh, device state or a feature called device state within policies that used to allow you to specify that if a device was compliant or hybrid Azure AD joined, it wouldn't be affected by the policy or it would be affected by the policy that's no longer possible. And instead, if we just go back to the conditional access policies and create a new policy with a target resource, no, a condition. And if we scroll to the bottom, we have a new one called filter for devices. And here we can say that if a device is compliant or hybrid Azure AD joined, then it's filtered in or out. So let's choose yes on here and we'll include the filter devices and the property would be something like is compliant equals to true. 
and then we can build that so that's now device is compliant and you can do very similar things with all the other properties that are available within this filter list much more powerful than just device state is compliant or is hybrid Azure AD joined so use that instead but keep up to date with the changes as they come because they are coming so fast next uh, authentication strength so if we go back into this list here this list here and down to authentication strength you can see we've got three core authentication strengths that have been pre-configured by Microsoft Auth strength essentially lets you determine which type of multi-factor authentication is acceptable in particular scenarios so for example we might just want to enable MFA which would include if we choose and choose that item there you can see we've got hello for business Fido 2 scrolling down this list we have things like SMS voice federated MFA all of these different multi-factor authentication types and they are you know they're acceptable multi-factor authentication types but what if you want strong MFA what if you only want to allow the authenticator app well there isn't really a list here that shows the authenticator app because uh, we have passwordless MFA which would give us the authenticator app using a phone sign-in so not the password plus multi-factor authentication through authenticator push notification so we don't have one that I'm happy with in fact what we should do is go over to here and choose the three dots and duplicate and then we can call it strong multi-factor authentication can't be longer than Let's call it strong MFA. Um, and here, get rid of that SMS because that, that's awful. So here we can say that we want to allow Windows Hello for Business, for example. And maybe we also want to allow the Microsoft Authenticator push notification as our strong authentication types, which is create. And you can see that I've got a new custom authentication strength called strong MFA. And then this authentication strength that I've just configured is usable within conditional access policies. Let me show you what I mean. I've just clicked the wrong button. Let me show you what I mean. If we go back into policies and find my require MFA, and let's say that actually we wanted all users to be using strong MFA in order to get into the environment, we could say the grant rule is no longer require a multi-factor authentication, actually it requires a specific strength of multi-factor authentication and here we have that list that we just saw we have MFA passwordless phishing resistant and mine isn't there yet why isn't mine in that list maybe I did something wrong let's go back and choose authentication strengths I have strong MFA set okay that's done. Back into policies, require MFA, grand control. Maybe it's just a little bit slow in updating this list. Nope, that's not a scrollable list. Okay, maybe it doesn't apply to existing policies. Let's try a new policy and I'll call it require strong MFA. Leave all that blank for now. Let's go down to the grand rule, require strength. And am I missing something? Well, I'm not really sure what to say. That's normally where that would appear. It would appear in this list where you can select the specific strength, even the custom strengths that you've created. I guess it takes a little while for that to update and put this in the policy. Uh, I'm not really sure, but that's where it is. That's my tip regarding authentication strength. So next over to um, the next one that's thrown me. It really has. Um, so the next one will be protecting uh, actions. If we go back into conditional access and say actually that in the event that a user needs to register for multi-factor authentication, we need to protect that particular action. So if a user is adding authenticator or, add, or adding their, their mobile phone number, we need to make sure that it's definitely them doing it. And it's quite difficult to do that when we haven't got multi-factor authentication enabled yet because they haven't registered for it. So we can say that when a user is registering, registering for MFA, they need to be using either a compliant device or they need to be in a trusted location like the office or on the VPN. 
So for example, we can configure that by choosing new policy and require trusted location or compliance for registration. Choose all users and down to target resources and we choose user actions and register security information. Now here that means that if we choose the grant rule to be require compliant device, you'll notice that there's no trusted location section within this list. The grant rule can't be, be in a trusted location. So if we set require compliant device and go back up, taking up half the screen for a couple of warnings there. Um, so we go back up in this very small screen here and we want the condition to be that the location is any location excluding all trusted locations. Okay, let's cut, let's create this so that we can actually see the interface a bit better. So we've got required trusted location or compliance for registration. Scroll down a little bit, you can see in the conditions we have any location and all trusted lo location excluded. So this means that if the user is in a trusted location, the policy won't apply. And if they are not in a trusted location, they need to be using a compliant device in order to start that registration process. Okay, good. Now remember all of these policies I'm creating are in report only mode. That means that I'm not, this won't have any effect in the environment right now. Be sure to look at which users are being affected. So include the user that you want to include, mostly all users, but you may have users that you need to exclude such as break glass accounts and admin users that you want to protect in a different way. So make sure you are con considering that when you eventually switch this to on. Always create in report only mode first, review how it will affect your users, check with other members of the team if you have them to figure out whether this is the right policy for you before you move it to on. And that leads me on nicely to the final tip that I've got, which is watch your excludes. So you can see here we've got all users included and it's, in, it's excluded me already by default because it popped up with a warning saying, are you sure you want to include yourself in this? That might You might lock yourself out. That's very easy to do. And what I find with a lot of customers is that they exclude themselves and they exclude things like global admins by choosing global admin here. And then suddenly you have a lot of people not protected by conditional access because you've included everyone that you think you want to protect and excluded the people who are a little bit more uh, difficult to protect because they do certain things in different ways. You need to protect them in a different way. You can't just exclude them from all policies and hope for the best. They're going to be an attack vector for anyone trying to get into the environment. One of the ways you can figure this out is by going back to the conditional access policies and go into overview and we have this awesome new feature called coverage. If we take a look at the applications, we have the users without coverage and the percentage of users not covered. Generally, this is not very well covered within this environment. Obviously, this is a demo environment. I've only got two users, but take a look at your coverage section and, and see whether you are as covered and protected as you think you are. Scrolling down, you can see we have this section called top accessed applications with conditional access coverage in the last seven days. Quite a mouthful, but very important. You can see that we have another list of applications and how the users were covered when they were trying to access applications. You can see, for example, for accessing the Azure portal, none of the users who accessed the Azure portal were protected by MFA. That's incredibly important information to have right at your fingertips using that overview section. And so those are my five tips for getting the most out of conditional access within Microsoft Entra. Hopefully it helped. See you next time.